wanted to go over a number of things we hadn't talked about yet. There are so, so many things that we could talk about, but I want to cover these functions. Um, you probably just watched or recently watched a video. Actually, I don't know when it happened, but uh, I just wanted to point out something here. I was just uh, setting up for the video that I'm about to do right now, and I realized that I had the output of the sequencer going into the input of the pulser, and uh, that was because I was controlling the speed of the pulser uh, so that I could control the speed of the sequencer. But unforeseen, and I never really thought about this, in the same way that you can voltage control the stages of the envelope generator, you can sort of create a similar outcome with the pulser when the pulser is controlling a gate. So you could get a different envelope theoretically per step by using the sequencer to change the voltage of the pulser with each step. So to do this, you need to set the sequencer to keyboard and you need to have something set up in the sequencer. You need to have your envelope generator set to keyboard, your pulser set to keyboard. And then of course you need to have, well, I have an envelope generator controlling gate one and I have the pulser controlling gate two, which is what we're gonna be focusing on. So I've sped up the period to a certain length and I have uh, jacked up the input from the sequencer going into the pulser. So if we listen to gate two, you'll notice that the, the amp and, well, actually it's the filter right now. The filter is getting different lengths of, it's getting different voltages, which are resulting in different outcomes. Let's just switch it to amp. Okay. So you'll notice that whenever we have a lower voltage, we have a longer note and a higher voltage, a shorter note. That's because the more voltage you give the period of the pulser, the shorter the sawtooth waveform is. So that's a cool way to uh, get different, uh, to basically voltage control the envelope that you're creating with the pulser when you're using the pulser as a keyboard <laughs> envelope generator. Does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, and now on to the other things we were actually going to talk about. Um, I just wanted to, let's see if this works real quick. Please let it work. Let's listen to. Okay. I don't know how much we talked about using the FM input on the mos mod oscillator, the modulation oscillator. It's definitely a thing that we can do. Here, I'm gonna disable this thing so we get a more lengthy thing. Okay, so I'm taking the output from the microfreak, which I'm using to control uh, the easel command, and I'm gonna put it into the FM in, so we should be able to hear some frequency modulation to the mod oscillator. You have to turn it up with uh, the FM in amount. Definitely, that's pretty cool. So you can either use, theoretically, you could modulate the mod oscillator with the output of the complex oscillator by taking the complex oscillator out and plugging it into the FM in and then controlling the amount. So that's kind of funny because typically the modulation oscillator does that to the complex oscillator. So you can get, uh, you can help the complex oscillator get revenge on its modulation uh, issue with the mod, Okay, that's just too weird. I'm just going to drop that whole metaphor. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, also, we probably we didn't talk about the from card uh, banana output. That has to do with the program interface card that goes here, which is basically um, it's where you get preset cards or. Uh, an iProgram card or something similar and you have it plugged into here, uh, there are modulations that are sent out of it that you can access from this banana jack. But if you don't have a card, then this jack's not gonna do you any good. All right, so we I think we talked about 
the inverter, but I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration. You might notice or remember that we already have an inverter for modulations going into the complex oscillator, but say we wanted um, to invert something coming from the pulser, I guess here. I'm going to now, I don't know what the outcome would be if I do this thing that I'm planning to do. So I'm just going to have the envelope generator controlling amplitude and filtering of oscillate the modulation oscillator output. Okay, so we're taking the pulser output. I'm going to put it into, well, first let's hear it uh, going directly into the mod oscillator. Let's get it doing something. Okay, so remember that sound? This is going to have the most surprising outcome. No, it's not. You're going to be like, wow, okay, now it's upside down. Okay, so that's really helpful. And uh, if you need a signal to be inverted, you have that ability sitting right there, which is very convenient. And that's basically all you need to know about that. The gate, two, gate one in, basically all that is is an audio input. Um, here, I'll give you a demonstration. This is coming from... The microfreak, if you plug this in, it defeats the complex oscillator. And then we're just gonna hear the microfreak. Not very loud, but so yeah. If you have an audio, uh, some sort of audio situation that you want to put into your easel, plug it into the gate one in and you are there. Okay, so we also have the auxiliary in, which could be directed to gate two, if that's what you wanted to do. So uh, we'll listen to that again. So now whatever you have going into the auxiliary in is going into gate two and you can manipulate it in whatever way that you want. You have a gain amount here. So if your signal is low, you can amp it up. And we also have the envelope out, which I haven't actually demonstrated, although I think I remember talking about it. I'm just gonna take that envelope out and I'm gonna control the frequency of, let's do the complex oscillator. So that's what the envelope we're getting from this sound is, which is a little bit weird. Here, let's amp it up a little bit. Wow. I don't know if you know this about the sound here. Let's demonstrate it. The amp has uh, a bit of an, a slow attack on it and we're hearing that specifically in the envelope that's coming out of there. It's really interesting. It's a weird effect. Anyway, if, uh, yeah, if you want to do any envelope following, you have that ability. Now you'll notice these card in inputs here. Those are, uh, those are inputs that will go to a card that you have plugged into the interface here. So if you don't have an interface, that's not going to do anything. But if you have like an aux card or something else that will take inputs from this interface, then that's where those, um, that's where you would plug your modulation sources or whatever in. Um, of course, we did talk about the gate two signal. So if you want to plug something into the gate two, that's where you would do it. If you have headphones in, you have your monitor level. And let's finally talk about <laughs> the reverb. There is a spring reverb inside of this device. 
uh, it takes up a tremendous, a large percentage of the inside of this device, actually. So we haven't really heard that. Let's get a sound going. So you have the ability, of course, to turn up the reverb. which is a really, you know, I'm not a big reverb user, but man, I find myself using uh, the spring reverb on this instrument because it really does make some interesting outcomes and beautiful sounds. Um, if you, you've probably seen, if you watch any of my other easel related videos, you'll notice I use the reverb quite a bit. So, those are the basic functions present. Oh, I will say one thing. You have this control switch here. The control switch uh, basically manages how to what degree the card that you have plugged into the interface uh, controls various functions. So when you have it switched to local, it has no control at all. If you have it switched to both, then you have access to control the easel command from the panel and from the card. And if this is switched to remote, the uh, command, the easel command can only be controlled via the card. So that's another thing I don't think I have mentioned yet that if you're having trouble getting any sound out of your easel, make sure that your control switch here is switched to local or both and not to remote because if you don't have a card there, basically nothing will work. And that's why you have that red light. Okay, I am playing, nothing's happening. So yeah, make sure, <laughs> it's kind of terrible. It's the last thing I'm telling you about the functionality of this instrument, but yeah, make sure you have your control switch switched to local unless you plan to completely control the easel command with some sort of card that can do that. Okay, so those are the basic functions of the easel command. <laughs>